All these rejections from the middle Bollinger Band. resistance, we're going to need to see here. We get a will look for a healthy tire. I would not don't have the full map to end the long trade. Hey crypto friends, hope you're doing fantastic today. We're going to check in on Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, BCH, then we'll do some story time. Been a fantastic day. Canadian MJ the last 6 days has just been on absolute fire and if you saw the video that I did with Neurogal about flow, today was the most in the zone flow that I've felt as a trader in months and today was the best trading day just in terms of I think I made over 20 trades but win percentage of those trades, the profit amount, and just how focused and how very easy everything seemed. It was uh, very inspiring. But that's also a scenario where I need to take a lap now because like, you get overconfidence as a trader and that can get you into trouble. So I need to take a lap, start every single day with a fresh, clean slate. What happened today is not going to have any impact on what happens tomorrow and remaining in that mindset to not get you know overconfident or cocky or increase position size or get more aggressive. So checking in on Bitcoin, on the daily time frame, we are getting a little bit of follow through on some of these names, on other names out of these four, we're not. So it's not changing anything on the daily chart. So we know the daily chart trend has to change for us to be looking at a shift in momentum. We've obviously shifted short term momentum, but that's just essentially going from bears in complete control and all out dumps to a short term bounce. And we just saw that for over a week in the middle of June here. So again, this isn't doing anything to change the trend. It's nice. It's comforting for bulls who were, you know, taking it on the chin, but anything under 70 or actually at this point it's 6829. That's now our new lower high. I'm used to looking back at 7777, but now we have another lower high, lower low, so that's a new resistance level and we're watching the exponential resistance as well. So in my opinion again, unless we see a significant bull news spike somewhere, and we did get some Tether news today, 250 million coming in on Tether that had a little bump. We'll look at that in a second. But in order to change the trend, in my opinion, we're going to bounce. We're going to set a lower high on the daily, probably at exponential resistance. And it's going to require a higher low and a higher high to change this trend. I'm watching this RSI downtrend line. Normally, I don't pay too much attention to the RSI downtrend lines. But when it's this significant and this long and drawn out, I definitely start paying attention. So I'm watching two things. I'm watching the downtrend resistance line, and I do feel the daily trend will change when this resistance is broken with some follow through. And I'm also watching this little tightening range. It's, you could draw a triangle here, and we know a break is imminent. So we're either going to see another bear flag and another move down and break this RSI back into oversold conditions on the daily, or we are going to see a bull break and the daily time frame bounce. Uh, shorter term time frames on the four hour we rejected from this level three times that was our must break level and actually it was four times before the bulls finally showed up and it was the reaction to the tether news that saw the bulls show up we look at the hourly time frame so it was rejection rejection when all those shorts were filled another rejection another this was a fake out that just had the bulls saying oh my god they're doing it again another barge simpson and we dropped down, we broke support, and then the tether news saved the day for the bulls at that point. So now we're doing this consolidation game where we pull back for you know, 12, 18 hours, and that's something I'm looking for to change. We need bull flags. When's the last time we've seen a solid bull flag of three hours of consolidation and then another spike up in continuation? It just hasn't been happening because we're in a downtrend. So I'm looking for that. That's gonna note a shift in momentum when we start seeing that happening. We are still holding exponential support. We need to see a break of... 63.40 to have us looking at that daily exponential resistance. And this candlestick is going to change over soon. And this daily exponential resistance is going to be in the mid 6,400s. So it is going to be in play to the middle towards the end of this week. And the bulls have a new support level established at 6,070. And the bulls are trying to maintain four hour higher lows. We want to see the 12 period cross the 26 period exponential moving average to the upside on the four hour time frame. We have an inside bar on the four hour time frame to be watching. And it's just a question again overnight. Can the bulls see continuation with follow through? Or are we going to fade back down again? And I am still swinging my Litecoin position just because at this point, I'm either going to, you know, go break even or small loss again or let the daily trend change. And I'm going to keep playing that game because these small losses are a drop in the bucket compared to profit, like I said, when the bounce really does get going, and also compared to Canadian MJ gains. So I'm going to keep playing my style that I have been playing and eventually will nail the bottom with perhaps a few handful of small losses in between. 
So that's where we are on Bitcoin. Everybody else is very similar. Let's look at the Bitcoin short. So they've been covering for days at this point, a couple days, pulling back, and they're the lowest that they've been in the past couple of weeks. So what that tells me is we have seen a bunch of covering during this period here where bulls were you know, exiting as the price remained contained. The bulls really let, or I should say the bears were exiting. The bulls really let the bears off the hook here. They had the chance to squeeze a couple thousand BTC, at least just from you know the Bitfinex positions, and they were unable to do so. They, they did see a bunch more covering on this news out of nowhere. Again, the news can catch the shorts sleeping a little bit. And so now we're looking at this pullback and this could tell me, you know, are these shorts going to switch to longs? That would make the daily bounce have follow through. If the shorts switch over to bullish positions, if they don't, and if they just patiently wait, then we're going to be looking just for that daily lower high on Bitcoin. And then we'll see if the bulls can pull off a higher low af of, after that. So I don't look at BTC longs very much. I check in on it. When you open a short position, you have to use margin. So you have to show up on this chart on Bitfinex. When you open longs, you can open longs with cash or you can open it with margin. And only the ones on margin are showing up on that chart. So it's an incomplete picture of the longs. It's a complete picture of the shorts. Ethereum on the daily time frame, not a whole lot of follow through inside bar on the daily here. So we're watching the tightening range, the four hour chart. We do have a little clear higher, low, higher, high pattern. Bulls want to maintain a higher low compared to 44, 445. We've got the top resistance at 473.27. And then we would be looking up at 481.74 after that. So a couple of resistance levels, multiple inside bars on the four hour time frame as well. And the hourly time frame, clear, higher low, and higher high. We do have a double top up, up at that resistance. So that's worth noting as well. 473, essentially a double top and testing exponential support, trying to see continuation. And Bitcoin is still holding its exponential support on the hourly. So the bulls still have some momentum in their favor. And we just need to see a follow through without news being the reason to just give confidence in this bounce continuation. Litecoin on the daily time frame, a little bit of follow through. Again, this is not convincing. You look at this and say, how are the bulls doing? And the answer is, eh, it's a, a lack of follow through, a little bit of an upper wick of follow through, but not closing strong. The daily RSI at this point is back up to 27 the four hour higher low that must hold is 78.80 and resistance is up at 84.49 and then 84.87 and then 87.11. So a couple of resistances, same story. It's not a four hour inside bar. We did head to a higher high here. Now we're consolidating. You could look at this hourly higher low of 81.40 and that's the tighter range. $80 is a support that held multiple times. So there are nice little higher lows here on the hourly to be watching. We'll see if the bulls can get continuation. They're going to need help from the Bitcoin bulls to do so. BCH on the daily time frame Again, very similar to Litecoin. Not convincing follow-through. Upper wick of some profit taking. Inside bars on the four hour are forming. Support is down at 734.80. Resistance is 780.80. And the next resistance after that is going to be up at 79. Or make that 785, I should say. So 785 resistance after 780.80. Very tight hourly or four hour inside bars forming, still grinding the hourly exponential support, close to a breakdown. Bitcoin bulls saving the day with that reaction. So that's where we stand on all these names. We have our clear four hour higher low. Some names have clear hourly higher lows. Again, BCH, if you wanted to be tighter, you look at 752. So we can look at an hourly higher low, the four hour higher low. If we lose a four hour higher low, obviously the bounce on the daily is that's as good as it's going to get. And we then have to form the higher low for a bounce. And the magnitude of this bounce does not have me entirely confident that a higher low on the daily can form. The more V-shaped a bounce, you know, you make a bounce like this, obviously with this short squeeze back in April, but you very easily assume a higher low is going to form. When the bounce is lackluster, you can't be so sure because again, the odds are there that it's a potential bear flag. So if, you know, if Bitcoin could get up to 6,500, then I'd say, all right, daily higher low is very likely to form here. But that's not the case. The bounce at this point, not significant enough. So we could easily see, you know, a little bit more follow through, maybe another leg up, a rejection from the daily 12 period exponential resistance, which would be a rejection from this RSI downtrend line, and then watch it get real tight into the end of this week and into the weekend. That's a possible setup right now. If you know, if you had a gun to my head and said, what is going to play out? I would say that's probably the most likely setup where we're going to test and reject whether we get there from some sideways trading or one more leg up. Test and reject from daily 12 period and have to, you know, see this tightening RSI and see a potential higher low. 
news changes, all of that, if it occurs, as we saw. I mean, we've seen news have significant reactions over the last week. So always worth paying attention to. And again, it's just a lack of follow through. Come on, bulls. Give me a bull flag and then increasing bull volume continuation move. Just hasn't happened in weeks and weeks. And I'm trying to look back at when the last time it has happened with just a clear, solid follow through move. And it really hasn't happened in a long time. So let's get on to story time. We are heading, I'm back to my solo road trip. Just went through North Carolina and Kentucky. Again, the ticks don't go to Kentucky in the summer into the woods and then made it pretty quickly. There's not a whole lot going on in Kansas, pretty flat and quickly made it over to actually pass through Missouri. There's some cool spots in Missouri. Went to this spot on my birthday and I found this one through swimmingholes.org. It's a pretty basic website and you just type in an area and it shows you on a map with little pinpoints of places that other people point out. So this is just a swimming hole and a waterfall that you would never ever find on your own, not being from that area. People share these places and uh, there's some really, you know, great hidden spots. And I definitely suggest checking that site out. So whenever I pick a destination that I'm traveling to, if I'm saying I'm in North Carolina and I want to go to you know, Yellowstone, I look at the map and where it takes me in between. And then I look at, you know, either hot springs maps or this swimming hole website or the woofing website, places like that. My, uh, or free campsite.net. That's another one as well. And I just look and see where do the spots intersect with my path. That's not too far off that path that I could stop at. So I pulled over here for my birthday. I turned 25, that was five years ago and, uh, camped out there. And it's the kind of places that you go when you're traveling by yourself where, number one, if you're doing it during the week, it's perfect because you can avoid all the crowds. Not many people are out you know, camping on weeknights at different places. And number two, you have so much solitude in so many of these places where you just hike up a few miles and everybody is just gone within, you know, by the evening time. This is a really cool, these are some kind of swallow but it was almost like a beehive watching this swarm of birds, just everybody popping in and out of all their holes. And I'm, it's astounding they don't collide into each other. It's just like watching bees going in and out of their hive. But uh, really cool mud. Uh, I, know, I knew their name at one point, but they use mud to make these little nests for themselves. And I've seen some really big ones where it's just this huge colony and the birds take over. Pretty cool to watch them all interact with each other. It's just this you know bustling city, essentially. So then made my way into Colorado. There's a lot of spots in Colorado. I spent uh, an entire month traveling around Colorado to all these different great spots. I'll show you some of the sweet spots more in depth in uh, tomorrow. But these are just spots that, again, you just hike up to a spot, a lake with mountains, and I would be here by myself. And I'd get here at maybe, you know, two, three in the afternoon. And by five, nobody else is there because anybody that's coming up at five would have to be walking down in the dark and you just have this entire place to yourself. And it's, you know, you maybe you say, oh, I want to climb up here and see what it looks like over here. Or maybe you want to jump into the lake. Or maybe you want to read a book or check out the wildlife. And the amount of wildlife that you will see when you're in a place like this by yourself, and if you intentionally just sit still into the sunset, because wildlife is most active at sunrise and sunset. And if you just don't move, you blend into the landscape and then things happen around you. And you can observe all kinds of things. This is a little marmot. Uh, you can tell where a marmot lives under the rocks because it's usually really lush green from all their waste around their house that they live under. So it really stands out for that. But these dudes live all over the place. If you pee on the rocks, they like the salt and they'll lick it up. And uh, they're just some cool little dudes. And they, I encountered some of them in the most incredible spots, 11,000 feet up above the tree line. And this guy just lives under this rock and that's his life and that's all he knows. And it's a pretty sweet gig. Um, this is a baby elk in Colorado. I, I like just, so what I would do is I would, you know, you have a lot of time on your hands. You have to be comfortable being lonely or not being lonely, but being on your own and not being lonely. Uh, so I would walk around and try and find wildlife and then sneak up on it and get as close as I could. And all of these pictures, I'm obviously not a photographer. These are all with my phone. Um, and so many times I could have cared less about taking a picture, but this was a little elk that I got pretty close to before it recognized I was there. I've done that with some deer before and some bison and you definitely want to have an exit plan if you're doing it with bison. And this is on to Rocky Mountain National Park now. So just entering 
west coast of Colorado. Again, just another spot, a big mountain lake where you can hike up and be by yourself. And actually, someone got lost here, which was pretty scary as it was getting dark. And they just wandered off the trail, and you could very faintly hear him. And we were all hollering, and he eventually found his way back. But again, just a spot like this where you can go and camp by yourself or with friends or whoever, but just not a lot of other people around, it's pretty epic. And we'll travel to some hot springs and some really sweet lakes and trails and camping spots and some really cool little towns as well in the next edition. I hope you have a great night. I hope you continue to do good things. We'll see you tomorrow.